Hi, thanks everyone for joining us for today's SNAP session. Meet the STTI United Nations Youth Representatives. I hope everyone's having a great day so far. Before we get started with our presentation, I'd like to remind you that you can remain interactive on the line using the control panel located in the upper right hand corner of your screen. This session is being recorded and will be accessible later this afternoon. That being said, I'd like to turn it over to our two youth representatives to introduce themselves and uh, tell us a little bit more about their experience. So Tim and Aiden, I will hand it over to you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Tim. I am uh, one of the youth representatives for Sigma Theta Tau International. Um, this is my third year as a youth representative. Um, and Aiden. Um, Hi, I'm uh, I'm Aiden. Uh, I'm just started this year as a UN Youth Representative, um, and I'm floating in from London, Ontario. So for those who are calling from the states, I'm a few hours north of Detroit, uh, and I believe I'm the first uh, international youth UN Youth Representative. The other Tim and, and my predecessor were both uh, in New York at the time. Yep, I um I live like a few blocks from the United Nations, so attending meetings is pretty easy for me. All right, let's continue. Next slide, please. So, a little background about the United Nations. Um, it has two main locations. The first location being in New York City, um, and the second one being in Geneva, Switzerland. And it was originally founded back in 1945. And on this slide, I just want to just point out on the right-hand side is a picture of the charter from the United Nations. And the important thing here is they state that we, the peoples of the United Nations, which means they want people from all different countries, civil society, um, to begin to, to, to participate in the proceedings that happen in the United Nations, and they want people to voice their opinions. Next slide. So, um, Sigma Theta Tau um, is one of the nursing NGOs at the United Nations. There are a few other ones, but the big ones I want to point out are the International Council of Nurses, ICN, and the Nightingale Initiative for Global Health, which is NIE. Next slide, please. So, Sigma Theta Tau um, is recognized as an NGO, but we also were granted special consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Uh, which is ECOSOC back in 2012. And what that means is um, we as an NGO are granted special privileges where we can attend higher level meetings. So for example, in September when they have the General, General Assembly in session, many of the meetings, normal NGO representatives are not able to attend meetings. However, um, representatives from Sigma Theta Tau are able to to get access, security access to these meetings because of our special consultative status. And there, this is just a picture of, I'm um, on the left hand side, and RESA, the, other, the United Nations prior to Aiden, it's on, it's using the purple. And the middle two um, are Gloria and DJ, who were representatives at the time for the Nightingale um, as initiative for global health. Next slide. So a lot, of, a lot of times we get asked, um, how did we get involved with the United Nations as youth representatives? Um, and we all, both, Aiden and I, took very different paths to get here. The UN youth representative position is actually a relatively new position. Um, Raisa and Tim were the first members, and, Ra and Tim is just finishing his uh, fourth year or his second term as the UN youth representative. Um, so it's still uh, a position that's growing uh, in terms of its role uh, for STTI and in the UN. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is us back then. Um, uh, and 2011 was the year that I graduated. Um, and the reason why we like to point to that is the title itself of a UN youth representative sounds, uh, can be, sound overwhelming being an official representative for STTI, but it's also a really exciting role with lots of support from the Global Initiatives Department. 
and with the staggering of the uh, UN youth representatives. So Tim has been uh, is his, more like a seasoned vet at this uh, and has uh, been able to mentor me and guide me through this process and hopefully I'll be able to do the same for the next uh, UN representative. Tim started just after graduating and although I started a few years later, uh, I find that as nurses we're used to being advocates for our patients and so when I started to take that approach I realized that I do have skills that I can bring to this role. Um, because our role is really focused on uh, advocating on behalf of the nursing profession and STTI values. Um, so we'll tell you a little bit more background about both uh, Tim and uh, our, my journey uh, to where we are now. Next slide, please. So my interest in doing um, international uh, activities kind of began back in sophomore year of college. I went with a group called the Global Water Brigades to a small town in Honduras that they got less than 100 gallons of water a day into the town during the dry season. And what we did was we created a clean water system by building a dam and piped that water down to a chlorinating system which was then piped to the, the, the town. But the most important thing is that this taught me the uh, importance of sustainability and what it meant to be sustainable and how just throwing money at a problem will not solve all your issues. Next slide. Uh, for me, uh, ever since my undergraduate degree, I've always been interested in concepts of global health and addressing issues in a practical way. After my, uh, I finished undergrad, I had the opportunity to do an internship with uh, an organization called the SPHERE Project that focused on creating standards for humanitarian assistance. Uh, so my experience with that really inspired me to go in to do my master's to look at um, you know, evaluation and ensuring accountability in humanitarian uh, systems. Um, so I've been able to, since then to stay involved with uh, global health and find opportunities for leadership and engagement. Uh, and most recently I was able to represent Canada at the Commonwealth Youth Forum where I met people from uh, all, the, all across the Commonwealth and participated in actively creating you know, plans and solutions for addressing some of the common problems that we shared. Uh, being a part of all of these experiences really allowed me to have a better, better understanding of how health issues we are facing are really uh, interrelated across the globe and also with other sectors like uh, education and climate change. So it was a really good experience for me uh, and also in helping understanding the importance of accountability. Next slide, please. So a little bit about myself. Um, I was originally from the New York University chapter for Sigma Theta Tau. That's the Upsilon chapter. And I was inducted back in 2012. Shortly after being inducted, I served as a secretary for the chapter for a year. And then later took on the role as a youth representative. Uh, my background as a nurse, I'm an oncology nurse at Morris Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Um, I started my career as a leukemia lymphoma nurse and later transitioned to the ICU. Um, I'm currently not working. Um, I'm a full-time student at Columbia University um, where I'm working towards my master's in science of nurse anesthesia. Um, I am also the past president and a founding member of the New York City Men and Nursing Chapter uh, for the American Assembly for Men and Nursing. Um, and this chapter has now grown to be the largest in the nation with over 280 members. And I also serve on the Board of Advisors for New York University Rory Myers College of Nursing. Next slide. Uh, so similar to Tim, I was inducted uh, upon graduating uh, and I was inducted to the IOTA Omicron chapter uh, in London, Ontario, uh, which is where I went to school. Uh, my clinical experience is focused in general surgery and I now work in the emergency department. Um, I'm still, uh, I'm com completing my Master's of Science in Nursing at Western University. Uh, my thesis has focused on um, understanding the experiences of Haitian women after the earthquake in Haiti, uh, looking at how we can be uh, more accountable to um, people, affected communities within humanitarian, uh, humanitarian assistance. Next slide, please. So now that you know a little bit more about us and our backgrounds, what is our role at the UN? Essentially, our job is to be the eyes and ears uh, for STTI members and at times the Global Initiatives Department uh, by attending briefings and sharing relevant information, um, which is also provided on our website, which we'll give you the link to as well. Um, so we gather the information from these meetings and share them with you so that if you're interested either for your chapter or for your communities, it's available. 
so we not only do we attend these meetings, but we also contribute to them um, by providing a nursing perspective in the discussions and also in developing some of the solutions that they come up with. Next slide, please. A larger part of our role is networking as well uh, with other organizations and also with other UN departments. We want to ensure we're building strong connections with those who are working on similar issues or initiatives um, so that we can collaborate with them and also support them. There are also opportunities to join committees at the UN um, or with other organizations who have youth representatives um, so that we can work together in achieving uh, some of these goals. So a few examples of events that we attend at the United Nations. Um, there are many events, and it can kind of you can kind of get lost at the United Nations with how many events there are. But you know we try to focus our attention on more healthcare-related events, and um, there are a few. Um, but you can always relate a lot of the topics back to nurses, how nurses can help out in communities. Um, however, one of the most memorable events that I went to was the Ebola briefing. Uh, they had a special envoy dedicated to Ebola at the time. It was when Ebola was all over the media. And as a nurse in New York, we were prepping in the hospital with PPE downing and how we should prepare for Ebola if it did end up in New York. So this is very applicable at the time. Um, but what was very interesting is um, as a nurse attending the event, they kind of took a different uh, view on Ebola, how we in healthcare always talk about you know the side effects and um, the potential uh, potential spread of Ebola. They talked about a more of a humanitarian approach and the implications of uh, social implications that these people face after they have contracted the disease and were cured. Um, it was very interesting how they compared Ebola to Ebola patients, survivors of Ebola, Ebola I'm sorry, um, to HIV patients, and how no one from their community or family wanted to take care of them or be associated with them, even though they had been cured. Um, so it was a very interesting um, side to see of, uh, Ebola. Um, they also have events uh, throughout the year. And one of the big conferences that we attend is the conference on teaching about the UN, um, where they kind of talk about ways different NGOs can get engaged in the United Nations and how you can spread it back to your communities. Um, putting it together, bioenergy, clean stoves, and sustainable developments. With the whole push with the sustainable development, developmental goals, a lot of these meetings are focused on um, a sustainable approach to fixing the problems in the world. Um, every year they have an annual CPO conference which goes on for a few days as well. Um, and they also have fun events every year. Uh, the UN Day of Happiness, the more entertaining events. Last year they had Pharrell come and perform at the event as well as a few other artists. And my personal favorite is always topics about sustainability of water. Next slide, please. So back in 2000, some of you might have heard about the Millennium Developmental Goals. Um, basically, they were goals uh, set for the world to achieve by 2015. However, these goals were both good and bad for many reasons, but they were mainly criticized for not being applicable to all countries. It was unfair for the poor countries and easily achieved by the more developed countries. Um, we've since moved on from the, from the Millennium Deve Deve Developmental Goals, um, which Aiden will talk about um, in future slides. Um, but the biggest positive thing that came out of the MDGs was essentially recognizing that financial need was needed in a lot of these poor countries. Um, and just between 2000 and 2005, after the goals were implemented, um, dispersal of uh, financial aid to poor countries doubled $60 billion to $120 billion. Next slide, please. So more recently, um, the General Secretary uh, Ban Ki-moon uh, stated, recognized the need that the MDGs were not um, sustainable and it wasn't what the world needed it right now. If we continue down the path that we're going in, we we're going to run out of resources for future generations. And he said that there is no plan B because there is no plan B. So he put forth an effort to change the MDGs into something that was 
uh, more applicable to the world, and we developed the Sustainable Developmental Goals. But before he did that, he wanted to survey the world and see what people wanted. And that's the next slide. So what came out, the lessons learned from the MDGs really focused on um, how do we make this a more inclusive, uh, how do we make these goals more inclusive? The MDGs were criticized, as I said, as focusing solely on the developing countries, but also as being a top-down process. So with the Sustainable Development Goals, they wanted to create a new approach that was focused on being bottom-up. And that's where we have the My World Survey. So this was a global consultation process across 193 UN countries involving 9.7 million people and thousands of organizations. Uh, essentially what happened was individuals were asked to rank a series of issues um, such as uh, food insecurity, employment, education, economy, multiple issues and rank them in terms of importance. They, this was the largest ever consultation process for global policy that the UN's ever been involved in. Um, there were individual people filling out consultation forms uh, on paper forms and actually 80% of the input that came um, into this, these surveys were done on paper forms, which really speaks to the fact that marginalized communities who didn't have access to the internet on a regular basis were, at, were consulted in this process. So this was a huge achievement for the UN and also contributed to the holistic nature of the goals. All of this information has now been collated and is presented uh, at worldwewant2030.org and we'll provide you the link to that uh, later. But uh, essentially, it's all quality of analysis and social media analysis, um, and all of the information from these surveys were, is what was used to make the Sustainable Development Goals. And actually, thanks to Tim and Reza, nurses played a big part in that as well. Tim, if you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, so, about in 2014, um, Reza, I, and the e representatives from the Nightingale Initiative for Global Health, we created an online campaign called World Nurses Want, which was basically we created a website uh, where nurses from around the world could access and learn about what nursing is doing at the United Nations. <clears throat> but the big thing that we did was we linked them from that uh, tutorial to the My World survey and encouraged them to voice their opinions on what nurses need around the world um, so that when they do, when they did, when they created the SDGs, our opinions were kind of incorporated into all that as well. We got support from about eight different countries, uh, nurses from eight different countries, um, and it was pretty well received. Next slide. And thanks to that, now we have the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, as we said, the MDGs were a start, and there were only eight, and now they've created 17. So it is a quite a big jump, but it, they do find that it's a more comprehensive framework. Some of the uh, MDGs were actually repeated in the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so looking at the first goal, number one, being uh, focusing on no poverty. Uh, in the MDGs, there was similar, uh, was reducing poverty, uh, but it was actually significantly impacted. The progress for that was impacted by the financial crisis of 2000 and 2007 and 2008. So the new goal is uh, hopefully a little bit more ambitious in trying to completely eradicate extreme poverty by 2030. Also looking at uh, goal number three, uh, which is specific uh, to nursing, I believe, in terms of good health and well-being. This is different from the Millennium Development Goals because health is not just defined as a disease or mortality rate. It's now much, a much more holistic um, definition, and it also incorporates aspect, uh, aspects of mental health, which wasn't included in the MDGs. And a lot of that comes from the feedback that they received from uh, people who were, who were telling the UN that health is more to them than just mortality and disease. And I'll just speak to the fifth one as well, which is gender equality. Again, repeated from the Millennium Development Goals, but they're trying to build on the progress and also learn from the mistakes. Uh, what happened with the Millennium Development Goals is that we did start to focus on women and girls, but we don't want to, we did not include men and boys uh, as well as we should have. And so now in the new Sustainable Development Goals, they've created the initiative, I'm heard you've heard of it, uh, the He for She Initiative. Um, and so that's about including boys and men and also promoting and gender equality. I won't read all of the SDGs out um, just for the sake of time, so we want to make sure we ha leave time for questions, but essentially these goals, goals are very comprehensive and they're very interrelated. So you cannot achieve uh, no poverty without addressing gender equality. You can't achieve gender equality without addressing quality education. 
So um, the hope is that we'll be able to achieve all of these goals together, working on them together. Next slide, please. These are some of the links that we think would be um, helpful for you, especially bringing back to your own chapters. Uh, the first link is the sustainabledevelopment.un.org, uh, and that focuses on um, identifying all of the SDGs, but also identifying specific targets under each goal. So there's 169 hard targets that they want to meet, um, and so if your chapter wants to address one of them particularly, it has a lot of information about uh, why those are important. The second link is information collected from the consultations. So they've organized all of the consultation forms from over 9 million people and put them into graphics, reports, charts, uh, so it's easy to read and helps highlight things for you um, that you might want to work on. And finally, we included an article that uh, was written for our own Reflections on Nursing Leadership that talks about the importance and impact nurses can have on SDGs. Next slide, please. So we've just listed here a couple of the, a few of the opportunities that we've had to, uh, been able to be a part of um, in the last year. Uh, I'll just speak to the Commission on the Status of Women. Um, so the Commission on the Status of Women just celebrated its, its 60th session uh, this year, and STTI uh, actually held a parallel session with the UN, um, and our members presented on empowering women through leadership development. Our UN uh, liaison for STTI, Connie Sensor, moderated the discussion and talked about, uh, they talked about their own personal experiences and leading within nursing, and it was a really well attended and well uh, received uh, event at the, uh, for at CSW week. Um, so it was really creating a space for active dialogue of being uh, a leader, particularly a women leader in, um, in the nursing, orga nursing organizations. So it was a great experience and uh, one of my first experiences with the UN. And Tim, if you wanted to speak to International Youth Day. Yes, uh, so I attended an event called International Youth Day uh, where they really were driving the power of youth around the world to drive changes. So Al Ahmed al Hendawi, which is the Secretary General's envoy to youth, and I quote him, he says, we cannot stay silent and be taken in directions that you do not want yourself, want to see yourself in the future. So he's really passionate about having youth involved in driving change around the world. Um, he stated that you know it would be impossible to achieve all the SDGs without getting the young people on board um, and that this might be our last chance to put the planet back into sustainability in terms of climate change. Um, we also as youth are drivers of social media too and although social media may not affect you know political changes it can affect you know, how people view things which will ultimately affect how um, policies are influenced. And he also really uh, encouraged youth, uh, not just youth representatives, but youth around the world, um, to use their power as consumers to drive businesses to be more socially conscious. Um, like if you know a business that is very wasteful in packaging materials or wasteful in, um, you know, greenhouse gases or something, you know, you can avoid them. Next slide. The uh, ECOSOC Youth Forum is another event that both Tim and I attended, uh, and it takes place, I believe, every year. And uh, I had the we had the opportunity to hear from great youth speakers who were uh, participating in a number of activities within their own communities and talked about really how to locally implement the sustainable development goals. Uh, we had the opportunity to be involved in discussions about health issues and region-specific issues, but I think my uh, favorite part was actually working with the other youth leaders to help create some of the solutions to the issues that we were facing uh, as a community. Um, so we actually ended up creating a, a communicator or a draft for app from the forum that talked about things that youth were interested in addressing. What we, they also stressed, similar to what Tim was saying, was that youth need to be actively involved in the sustainable development goals. Uh, and not just in being implemented, but also in the planning and monitoring and evaluating um, our governments and ensuring that we're holding them accountable to um, the sustainable development goals. And it also called on organizations and uh, governments to create meaningful space for youth to be engaged uh, at this level. So STTI is already one step ahead with having the youth reps. Next slide, please. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the opportunity to be involved in various committees. Uh, one of the committees that uh, I joined is the Interagency Network on Youth Development, and their focus is specifically on gender equality. 
Um, so they have meetings monthly where NGOs who are all working on similar issues within youth uh, have a chance to share what they're doing. Uh, so it gives STTI uh, an opportunity to collaborate with other NGOs, but also uh, gives us access to a wider community to promote our own initiatives. Um, so they hold Twitter talks on the 8th of every month, and uh, they fo that focus just on gender equality. And they also hold, um, on the 25th of every month, Twitter talks on youth action and gender violence. Uh, hopefully we'll be working with them to help plan a few events in the future. So there's always different opportunities for us to be involved as nurses uh, and also have a voice in some of the issues that come about. Next slide, please. So a question that we're always asked is how can we get our chapters involved in the United Nations? So we always say, uh, start with your local chapter and your communities. Don't focus on all the sustainable developmental goals. That would be too much for one chapter to handle. So we highly recommend that you focus on one of them. Go through the SDG list, figure out what your chapter wants to uh, focus on, in on, and direct all your efforts toward achieving it. Um, ways that you can help your community um, achieve these goals uh, for example, SCG3, which is related to promoting health and wellness. You could host like a blood pressure screening in your community or collecting medical supplies to send off. If you don't want to do something related to health care, SDG14, which is one of my favorites, is uh, relating how we can be more economical with harvesting fish and ocean life. Um, you can maybe even host a trip to your local aquarium to teach members about why it's important uh, to think about overfishing and keeping the world underwater safe. And if you feel lost, you can always reach out to NGOs um, and see if they need help with anything. Tell them that your nurse is looking to achieve the SDGs and I'm sure they'll find a way for you to help. Um, there's a list of NGOs listed in this link here. Um, and I'm sure if you Google, um, Google the NGO name, you'll be able to find their website and contact information. Next slide. We all know that New York City is very far away from many of you, and attending briefings may not be possible. However, most of the most important briefings are um, webcasted through UNDV. Um, and if you missed the live stream webcast, all the events are archived within their libraries as well. So the website is just webtv.un.org. Next slide. You can also access information about Sigma Theta Tau and what we are doing um, at, as at the United Nations. If you go to the Sigma Theta Tau website, under Connect and Engage, you'll see a link called, called Global, like that. And then on that website, there is a, you'll see a link for United Nations. And everything that we do, uh, we always submit a, uh, a report to Sigma Theta Tau, which is then posted on that uh, website there. Next slide. So if you do have more questions about uh, not just the United Nations, but other uh, initiatives that uh, SCTI is involved in, there's a Global Initiatives Department, and that's the email there. Uh, and also, uh, there's the link for the uh, website, which shows uh, all the different organizations that STTI is affiliated with or networks that they're affiliated with. Um, so if there's other issues that you would like to address or like to get involved, that's a great place to start. Next slide, please. Uh, these are just some discussion questions, and please feel free to, to ask us questions as well. Um, just in terms, we want to make sure that we're uh, helping you in your local chapters be connected with the UN, and if there's any better way that we can do that or um, strategies that you feel would be helpful, we'd love to hear, to hear from you. And feel free to type any questions or comments into the question log and hit send, and I can read those to Tim and Aiden as well. Um, or you can raise your hand, and I'd be happy to unmute your line. As I mentioned, this webcast has been recorded so that we can post it on that global website that they have mentioned. Uh, so we'll be sure to get that video posted. Please feel free to share it with your chapters. I want to thank Tim and Aiden so much for their time today. Thank all of you for your time today and hope you're able to attend a SNAP session in the future.